Hey friends, welcome to Photoshop Icebreakers. I'm Vanessa, the artist behind the life of AVAX, and I create art inspired by childhood imagination with my family. Anyway, one of my favorite things to do in Photoshop is draw hair, especially curly hair, because most of us in my family got the curly gene. So today I'm showing you how to draw hair with four simple steps that will help you create movement on your subject. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so here's the image we're going to use. As you can see, it is Indy on a pillow rocket. So we wanna make it look like he's actually moving because right now his hair is looking a little bit stiff. There is absolutely no movement whatsoever and you can't really see the definition of his curls. So we're gonna fix it. But before we begin, we wanna make sure which direction his hair is going to go. And that is to the left. And the reason why is if his hair is blowing towards the left, it creates the illusion that he is flying towards the right. So we're gonna create a new layer. And for our brush, what we're gonna go ahead and use is the flat, blunt, short, stiff brush, which is part of your legacy brushes that everyone who has access to Photoshop has. Now for my brush size, I want it to be at a 15 pixel size. So pretty small. And then I want my opacity to be at a 50%. Then for the color, we're gonna go ahead and select our color picker and we are going to select a chocolate brown that is naturally in his hair. So the first thing we're gonna do is just get the shape that we want in the direction of his curls. Doesn't have to be perfect. This is just gonna be a guide. Now I am using my stylus, but you can totally use a mouse. I've used a mouse for years. I've only been using a stylus for about a year, so this is totally doable with a mouse. I'm also gonna add some to the front. Okay, so I like the shape of his hair. I know right now it just looks like a bunch of scribbles, but this is one of those like you just have to trust the process. All right, so now we're gonna start with the next step, which is adding in the highlights and the definition of his hair curls. So for this, I'm gonna lower the opacity down to a 30%, just so we can build up to it a little bit gradually and have a little bit more of a fade. I am gonna lower the size of my brush as well to a 10 pixel brush, and I am on a new layer. As far as the color goes, you wanna use your color picker and select the highlights to get a lighter color. Now we are gonna start from the front and we're gonna work our way back just because we have this really big light source right here in the top right corner. So there's gonna be a lot more highlights there. Now if you are using a stylus, I would highly suggest selecting this button here next to the opacity, which is going to help give you a little bit more control over the pressure of your brush stroke. So as you can see, I'm just shaping the curls. So this second step has two parts. So we have the highlights, which we just did. Now we're gonna do the shadows. And again, I know that your subjects, when you're drawing hair, might vary. Maybe your subjects have like super straight hair or maybe they have super curly hair. But I kind of feel like this example is perfect because Indy kind of has like this weird hair that's like a combination of both. So for the shading, we're still going to use a 10 pixel brush, but our opacity is gonna be bumped up to a 50%. And you also wanna make sure that you are brushing in the opposite direction. So what I mean by that is when we were brushing the highlights, we were starting from like the top and doing those like upside down backwards C strokes. And now what we're going to do is we're going to start in the opposite direction and go towards the top. So as you can see, I'm kind of doing that like right here. And what that's going to do is just round out the shape of the curl and just the hair in general. So we have two main light sources here. We have this one and we have this one. So this one is going to bounce in this direction and it's going to create these highlights that you see right here. Then here you have this light source which is doing the same thing but on the opposite. So it's doing it on the top of the curl. And then once I'm done with like the overall shading everywhere, I'll just go in there with like a little bit of a bigger brush. I'm at a 15 pixel brush now and I'm just going to really accentuate the dark areas of his hair. Now we have the shape of our hair, our highlights, and our shadows. Now comes the final step which is the detailing. Now within this last step we have two subsections. So we have like the fine hair that we're going to draw in and then we have the super hard highlights. So let's start with the super hard highlights. 
All right, so for the detailing highlights, we're gonna go ahead and select like a really light yellow, kind of like cream color. And I'm gonna drop down my brush size to one pixel. So I'm just gonna go in here and I'm just gonna add in like these really strong highlights here and there. So as you can see, I'm kind of just going over the areas that were already previously highlighted, but we're doing it in a much thinner brush stroke. So the last thing we're gonna do is add in the individual hair strands. Uh, I'm gonna switch over to the hard round um, pressure size brush and my size, I'm gonna go ahead and bring that down to one pixel. My opacity is gonna stay at 100. If you're not using a stylist, I would highly suggest lowering your opacity down to like maybe like a 40 or 50 just so that you don't get these really hard lines. Then we're just gonna go in here and we're just gonna take a few minutes to just draw in little hair strands all around the highlighted areas and feather out these like little ends as well. And don't be afraid to add in flyaways. I feel like flyaways make such a huge difference when you are digitally painting a person and their hair. It adds that realistic characteristic to the photo. Everyone has flyaways, so just having them not follow the same pattern of the hair and kind of just doing their own thing creates a much more realistic image. Then what I'm also going to do is go in here with a dark brown and I'm gonna do the same thing, just adding hair strands and just breaking up these soft spots that are making it still look drawn. So learning how to do this is gonna be very helpful if you're not really good at photography or if you just wanna learn how to get really proficient in digital painting, just adding extra details to your own characters. Okay, then just to finish this off, you always wanna make sure that everything is blending very nicely with the rest of your image. So I went in there and I added a little bit of levels just to contrast some of the areas here. I do have a preset that is on top of him and that preset has like this light and that's kind of uh, softening up the contrast in his hair. So I needed to go in there and counter that by adding some levels and just increasing those blacks. And then I also went in there with a brightness and contrast and just brought down the overall brightness of the back of his hair that is not being touched by the light. And then I also added a little bit of color balance to bring in some cyan on the back of his hair as well that is also not being touched by the light. And this is how it turned out. Now he looks like he's actually flying. And that's it. I hope this helps you with your next Photoshop composite. Thanks for watching. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Oh, and let us know what you'd like to learn next in the comments. Okay, bye.